and welcome to my video on how to build vampire accounts armies. Really quick, before we get into this, if you want to win a pre-order for Warhammer 3 along with a load of other goodies, then definitely be sure to check out the Torox Rampage competition, which is currently going on on the channel. If you want more details of this, then definitely check out the video linked on screen and in the description, or simply join the Discord where all the rules are displayed. And now, onto the video. The Vampire Counts undoubtedly have a very strong roster, but it does definitely have some flaws. They have barely any ranged units, they only really have the one strategy of rushing, they don't have many answers for large targets, have a massive weakness to fire, and of course, since everything is basically raised dead, they never get overly skilled, so stats like melee attack and defense tend to not be as high as they could be. The army, however, does have some positives. Every single thing in the roster either causes fear or terror, meaning the enemy is constantly under psychological pressure. There is also no rooting, so everything fights till the death, or second death as it were. This does mean that they start to disintegrate if they run out of leadership, but they will continue to fight until they are completely gone. Lords and heroes carry on battles both in combat and utility, and utilize regeneration more than any other faction in the game. They also have a variety of powerful monsters that will make up for these lesser skilled infantry and raised dead units. So first of all, we have the early game. Our options for this are tier 0 units like skeleton warriors and zombies, and tier 1 units like felbats and dire wolves. First things first, we're of course going to bring a lord and they're going to carry your armies early on since nothing else really has damage aside from them so be ready to send them constantly into battle. Until you unlock better units you're probably going to want to pick a fighting lord because they're going to be doing a lot of combat. For our front line we're bringing eight skeleton warriors since they can literally get free upkeep so I see no need to get zombies since they are worse in every way even if you can also get them for free. The decent line holding infantry but they really aren't going to get many kills as I said your lord is going to be doing the damage. We're going to bring six die wolves which are a great early game unit for chasing down ranged and retreating units but they do need to go around in pairs which is why I went for six of them to surround enemy units two on one. Finally we're going to get five fell bats which are a very weak flying unit but in close they can blitz weak enemies all right, so send them either in two groups or one big one and get them out before the enemy gets too close. The strength of this army is the fact that it's so damn cheap, so if you lose any units, you can replace them almost immediately. You're also going to have a massive numbers advantage since eight skeleton warriors make up for a massive number of entities, meaning you can surround the enemy front lines even if you can't beat them outright. The main damage in this army is going to come from the wolves taking out the ranged and retreating units, and of course your lord, so definitely be sure to keep both of these alive. As for the weaknesses of this army, of course when you start going against more elite infantry, the skeleton warriors will melt extremely fast even if they're just going against swordsmen. Bats struggle against even the most early of early game units, so once they get anything that's even slightly mid game, you're going to need to get rid of them. Now moving on to the mid game composition. For our choices, we have tier 2 units, Crypt Ghouls, Tomb Guard, Skeleton Spearmen, Black Knights, Corpse Cart, a White King, and a Necromancer, and tier 3 units, Tomb Guard with Great Weapons, Crypt Horrors, Vargeists, Vargulfs, Black Knights with Lancers and Barding, and the Corpse Cart of Balefire. So this army, of course, contains our Lord, who should be getting more powerful now, having access to some mounts and spells, so we'll be fighting whilst also providing some utility. We're going to add in a necromancer who's a great support hero for extra lore of vampires keeping your units nice and healthy. We're going to replace our front line with four tomb guard with great weapons and two regular tomb guard. Great weapons do fantastic in the middle of the front lines with brilliant AP damage that shreds most enemy infantry. The regular tomb guard are a tougher version that don't deal as much damage but will hold up better versus cav even if they aren't anti-large. I considered skeleton spearmen but the anti-large bonus doesn't make up how much better tomb guard are in every other trackable stat. I'm going to be bringing in some vargulfs which are awesome single entity monsters that can replace your direwolves since they are so bloody fast and will shatter enemy ranged in seconds. It may not be as good at wiping the units out when retreating, but they will send them packing and be able to go back to finish the job if needed, whilst also being able to assist the front lines. Also getting four crypt horrors to embed in the front lines, and these boys are really strong at dealing decent armor piercing damage and huge air of effect attacks at poison targets. And if I can get poison into my armies, I'm going to since it's just so strong. Also going to be replacing my felbats with vargeists since they are so much stronger if a little bit slower, but they can take on decent enemy units as long as they are two on one, meaning they are twice as efficient at taking on enemies. This next one's a bit of a judgment call. You want to get some black knights either with lancers or swords. Lancers are better but require some micro whereas swords do better if you just leave them there. If you take lancers they are decent cycle charging units that may require some babysitting but can shatter the enemy in a couple of rounds. The swords aren't as fast to take out enemies but you can just send them in and leave them there to take on the enemy till the end without needing to give them new orders every single second. This army is now starting to get a lot more mobility with a few more monsters and of course the cav units which allow you to rush up to the enemy even faster. Also has a much tougher and high damaging front line so now instead of just being the block of units to slow down your enemies, they're actually doing some decent damage. And of course, with your Lord and the Necromancer, you can be casting off the Invocation of the Heck every single second to keep your units alive and healthy. Well, as alive as they can be. Finally, for our end game composition, we're of course bringing in tier 4 units, the Black Coach, the Corpse Cat, Unholy Lodestone, Cairn Raves, Banshees, and Vampires of Shadows and Death. 
and tier 5. Hex Wraiths, Blood Knights, the Mortis Engine, and the Terror Geist. Of course, the Lord at this point should have all their spells that you want and a powerful mount, so should ideally be racing around the map, helping out your army in combat and with a powerful spellbook. Vampire Lords never really stop leading their army, they just change exactly how they're doing it. The Necromancer should also be on a corpse cart by now, which provides some free value. They should also have a full spellbook, so provide even more value whilst healing units and providing magical regeneration. Our front line is staying the exact same, four Tomb Guard with great weapons and two regular Tomb Guard. We're upgrading to four Vargulfs, since these guys are just better than Crypt Horrors, and while Horrors may be more than one entity and can hit more units at once, these lads are faster and do more damage, so I think they're a better choice. We're going to pick up two Mortis Engines. These are beautiful units that provide a ton of aura effects to buff you and debuff enemies. They're also ethereal, so are deceptively tough and not easily taken out, so can partake in a little bit of combat rather than just sitting at the back. We're pulling in two Terror Geists, since these big lads have a great breath ability, as well as being incredible forces in melee combat with huge armor piercing and anti-large damage. We're dropping out to two Vargeists to make room for the Terror Geists, and we're keeping two for cost reasons, as well as the fact that these guys can swarm better than a single NC ever could. And again, we have a judgment call here. If you want to handle the micro, then go for Blood Knights, since they absolutely do the most damage when used properly. If not, then Hex Wraiths are a great choice, since they do great sustained damage in combat and have magical attacks and are ethereal, so are incredibly difficult to kill. The strength of this late game composition is all in the monsters and the fast units. The Blood Knights or the Hex Wraiths can get around the enemy and decimate any ranged or artillery that they may have. Along with the Vargeists and the Terrorgeists, the enemy backlines won't know what hit them, and once they're eliminated, every single unit that is attacking the back lines will also be as effective on the front lines. The Mortis Engines will provide powerful buffs and make that front line even stronger for Underlord and the Necromancer casting as many spells to buff this front line and a heavy, seriously tanky army. Of course, the Vargulfs are also there to assist in the front lines and decimate anything that remains. Now to see how this endgame composition performs in battle, I'll hand you over to Miles. Take it away. And thanks for that, Miles. As you can see, we're going against the Empire since they are the faction that the Vampire Counts most definitely go after the most. And, uh, well, they have a nice variety of units, so it makes for a good uh, litmus test for how you can do it against pretty much everyone. As you can see, the uh, main weakness with the Vampire Armor is the fact that we have to rush up to them. We can't range attack them or anything, so my front lines are going to get a little bit decimated here. Uh, trying to move my Blood Knights and Hex Wraiths around the side. I decided to bring one of each just to show you how both of them perform. As you can see, taking quite a number of hits from the Hellstorm Rocket Batteries and the Luminax of Heish. Not very enjoyable there, but again, the front line, even though it is very strong and can do a lot of damage, isn't the main power of this army, so I'm not too torn up about the fact that we're losing a bunch of units. I noticed that a lot of his units were in this nice fat line here, so I decided to get my Lord to cast a wonderful Wind of Death, because, you know, if the enemy lines up, you just kind of have to. It's a fantastic spell. Lord of the Vampire is one of the best laws in the game. Now, let's just see how many kills that racks up. Oh, yep, that's, uh, yep, that's a good one. And then, oh my Lord. And then I'm also using all the Breath abilities that uh, my Lord and the two Terror Guys have, so... Yep, we're not even a minute into this battle and we've nearly taken out 300 of the enemy units. Uh, I'm then moving both my, uh, all of my flying units, sorry, uh, around the back here, waiting for the enemy to form up so I can decide where exactly I want to attack and take out their ranged units and artillery as soon as possible because they obviously aren't the biggest threat. I send one squadron over here to take care of these handgunners, which is Terror Geist and Vargeist, and then I send the rest into this big clump here, which is a bunch of Huntsmen, and then handgunners, and then great swords, and then everything else, which is undoubtedly going to come down on top of me, because uh, if you attack enemies like this, the Lords tend to get involved if your Lord is over there. As you can see, my Cav got intercepted by some Demogriff Knights, but that is Blood Knights and Hex Raves versus Demogriff, so they might take a bit of damage, but they should do just fine. Uh, the front lines have clashed. I've got the Swords of Ulrich going against a unit of Graveguard and great weapons, so they're not going to do very well, especially with the two Vargulfs and the Mortis Engine heading over for all those buffs. Uh, on the right side of the battle, if I actually turn around correctly, we have some of the Graveguard and a Vargal Vargulf going against the Demogriff Knights. So, not the best matchup there, but also not the best matchup for the Demogriff Knights, so they should do just fine. And again, in the middle here, Demogriff Knights against a bunch of my units. Uh, on the right hand side, the Vargeist that went with the Terror to take out the Handgunners. Uh, they did a pretty decent job, but they have been intercepted by Luminac of Heish and more Demogriff Knights. They have taken quite a number of hits, so I decided to get those Vargeists out of there to try and protect them. Demogriff Knights are very about to break, so I'll be able to use my Cav very, very, very soon. And of course, as expected, a big old cluster has formed over here with my Lord, the Terror Geist, the Vargeist, and then a bunch of the enemy Lords and Heroes. Uh, fortunately for me, this left flank isn't holding too well, so on Save Shad, I'll be able to move my units in and uh, start to pile in some of my own dudes into that clump and take them out even faster. That was a bloody powerful shot, but thankfully they're only aiming at Grave Sword with great weapons because the AI, pretty dumb. So we should be able to rush up and take them out nice and quick. There we go. My cab is now getting into position. The Blood Knights are moving around to set up a fantastic charge into these handguns, whereas the Hex Raves have decided to focus 
onto the Luminac Pyche, which is very, very good. So those guys, extremely strong, have a lot of ward save, do a lot of damage. But if you pin them down melee, they're not the best. Terror guy's still duking out with the Demogriff Knight Halberds. They do anti-large damage, so it's not the best matchup for him. But he's pretty big. And also, tying these guys up allows the rest of my army to do some serious, serious work. As you can see, pretty much all the enemy front lines have shattered. I'm now moving my units into this cluster to get rid of the enemy lords, heroes, and of course, their great swords. I'm going to pull these Vargas guys around to charge into the uh, White Wolves Huntsmen and of course, the Handgunners, as well as my Blood Knights when I can get them out of this situation. Uh, I managed to pull the Halberds off of my Terror guys because they were attracted to the Blood Knights. So now he's free to roam, which I'm sure he will in just a moment since I've realized that uh, he's able to move. See the Mortis Engine in the middle of all these units providing, oh, so many buffs. Would you look at that? Healing per second, healing per second. Oh, melee buffs, these things are so fantastic. Corpse carts are pretty crap, but the Mortis Engines, they are so, so worth it. Mainly because they're so cool, but you know, also because they do a lot of work. There we go, Blood Knights finally moving in to take out the Silver Bullet Handgunners and the Vargeist, of course, taking out the Huntsmen and the Handgunners over here. And the enemy is starting to break. Pretty much everything is going, and that is army losses. And that's the victory. Uh, so yes, the weakness of this army, definitely the speed uh, for the front lines. But again, it doesn't really matter because, you know, the front line isn't really the damage dealer. So if it all gets killed, it's really not the end of the world. And we shall see that in the stats. There we go. So combined, the entire front line has just over 100 kills. So they're really, really not the powerhouse of this army. Uh, the Lord, of course, got 304 kills. I think he got about 260 from that first cast. So, uh... After that, it was a little bit lackluster, but he was fighting against the enemy lords and heroes and their elite units that don't die very easily. Uh, the Necromancer with zero kills, completely fine. I literally just bring them for Aura, Invocation of Nehek, and the Forbidden Blade. If you can, I know that it's in custom battle, but if you can get a Forbidden Blade or some item like that that allows them to regenerate more magic in the campaign, then it's so worth it because they can just chain cast Invocation of Nehek and it is absolutely crazy. Oh, we're getting, going against Boris. Didn't even realize. So moving into the Cav, we can see the Hexraves, 26 kills uh, in sustained combat, whereas the Blood Knights, 60 kills, uh, but they were cycle charging and these guys are going against elite units anyway. So, you know, roughly the same. If you cycle charge the Blood Knights, they can shout pretty much anything. Great swords, just anything that isn't anti-large and doesn't have charge, bon uh, charge resistance. These guys will shatter literally anything. They are fantastic, but again, they do require a lot more micro. As for the Vargeist, about 100 kills between them. You want to send these guys in against uh, weaker enemy units, such as range like handgunners, crossbowmen, huntsmen, uh, artillery sometimes, but it might be more worth sending the Terror Geist in versus artillery, purely because um, they're attacking a smaller number of enemies, so they can do more damage in that tight area, if that makes sense. As for the Vargulfs, about 43, 45, that's about 100 kills, 100 and something kills between those guys. Very, very respectable indeed. They do a ton of armor-piercing damage. Yes, their damage value isn't that high. It's because they're all going against a bunch of infantry, and the enemy didn't really bring too many infantry in this battle, so they didn't get to show off too much. But still, they're a fantastic unit, and I think it is worth losing the poison damage of the Crypt Horrors purely for that enhanced speed and also just much higher damage. The leadership isn't incredible on EVE units, but these guys do a fantastic job. Of course, the Terror guys were pretty much doing one-on-one -on -one battling or fighting against uh, some Cav. So not the most amount of damage value right there. I think, to be honest, the Lord uh, stole pretty much all of the damage value of this battle in that first cast, but never mind. As you can see, 128 kills on the Mortis Engine. Very impressive. Only 12 on that one. I'm guessing this one was on the left that was actually getting involved in combat, and this one was just kind of chasing around, providing buffs. Mortis Engines, again, it's like Necromancer. If it gets zero kills, I really don't care, as long as it was in there. Healing, buffing, just doing so much to help your own units and debuff the enemies. That is how they get value. They don't get value by kills. They get value by auras, which is super important. But yes, that wraps up my battle replay and also this video on how to build army compositions for the vampire counts. If you want to see more videos like this on every single faction, then be sure to like the video and also subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. Don't forget to take part in the Torx Rampage competition. It's going to be a lot of fun and you can find all the details in the Discord, which is of course linked in the description. I'd like to take this time to thank all supporters of the channel, in particular, Kobe said so for his fantastic support at the Unclean Ones tier. One more time, thank you so very much for watching, and for now, I've been Colonel Damders, and I will see you next turn.